this is a video introducing you to the next stage of our upgrade with our project Evo 10. Unfortunately, the engines suffered an untimely death from our long-term R&D testing. You can see later on in the video, we'll show you what caused it and how it happened so you can learn from our extreme testing. What you can see here at the moment is the guys have already removed the bottom of the K-frame off the Evo in preparation of pulling the engine out. Um, the aim is to remove this engine off the transmission and uh, transfer case and then bolt up the newly rebuilt 2.5 litre Stroker Evo 10 engine. And then obviously, obviously you're going to require a huge upgrade from a dyno tuning point of view with the Ecotec software. But this video will show you what the car looks like with no engine in it, what the engine looks like out of the car so you can see all the parts that you normally can't see um, if you've got an Evo or you're looking at an Evo yourself and then steps all the way through to the end from a video to show you the dyno testing and finally the road test. So stay with us, I'm sure you'll find this video really interesting. So what we're doing, we're just about to drop the engine out of the Evo 10 and one of the opportunities we've got is you really get to see just so much of the engine sitting on the engine mounts with all the K-frame removed from underneath the car, no steering rack, no lower suspension mounts. You can see all the front suspension, brake discs, everything hanging from the top mounts. So if I get my cameraman to come in a little bit closer, you can see the five-speed transmission, um, the bottom of the sump, obviously the backside of the transfer case, which obviously takes a drive off the gearbox and creates a longitudinal drive out through the rear tail shaft. And of course, some of the other things that you can see if you come around this side is obviously the front drive shafts that come out to the left-hand side and the right-hand side the rear tail shaft extension housing off the back of the transfer case and of course these parts here which we've got just zip tied out of the way whilst we're about ready to drop the engine is the uh, gear shift cable mechanism that connects the bottom of the gear shift through the cable to the top of the transmission. So on this side of the car you can see the transfer case but the really good thing you can see clearly here is the uh, outlet pipe for the turbo which obviously comes from the back of turbo and the split collector that is unique to MRT with the collector off the back of the wastegate merging into the main three inch downstream pipe that forms the top half of the exhaust system. Now this has got a dull look on it because it's been extremely hot. It's actually HPC coated to keep the heat within the pipe for maximum airflow when the car's under heavy load. So we've obviously got the engine out as you can see it's now down on the ground but what I wanted to show you was a rare opportunity to see what it looks like in an Envo 10 engine bay with no engine. So um, we'll cut away to a different video and whilst I'm talking I'll show you, you can see all around the inside of the video the radiator, the, where the drive shaft comes out, the rear drive shaft spot on the back of the transfer case, steering rack and of course there's a lot of things but as you can see here this is where all the K-frame sits up underneath to support the lower half of the suspension which bolts in underneath the chassis and at also the same time supports the lower half of the engine. So you can see this is a result of um, some pretty heavy duty durability testing on our behalf. The Evo 10 engine in the MRT car has obviously had a hell of a lot of testing over the last year or two and our aim is obviously always to find the limits. Well sooner or later we knew we were going to find them and this is a pretty good example and actually you can see right through the block. But what's actually happened is you can see here the Conrod bearing still turning obviously quite easily on the, the bottom of the crankshaft but what's happened is the rod's actually broken in the middle, in the middle. and uh, one of the traps of this engine is they're an incredibly good engine but over a period of time sooner or later it will bend a rod um, due to excessive use, uh, boost or possibly a bit of an over rev but sooner or later it is a well known fact that these engines will fail through a bending of the con rod due to excessive boost at a certain boost level which um, I can't say here, that's one of the things I'm not going to tell you unfortunately but what happens is the engine drops power, if you don't realise it sooner or later the rod bends further and it finally breaks and this is a result. We actually expected this was going to happen sooner or later. It was just a case of when it was going to happen. So in the meantime, it's given me an excuse to build a new 2.5 litre stroker engine. This is the five-speed transmission of the Evo 10. Unfortunately, we missed out on that sixth gear as opposed to the Evo 9, unless you've got an SST transmission. But of course, this is the 100% manual transmission, which of course also has the transfer case dismantled off it. And of course, this part here is what bolts up to the side of the engine with the clutch assembly. And of course, um, 
the transfer case which hangs off the side here and gives the rear drive out to the rear wheels but this is one of the obviously the engine mounts which support the engine when it's inside the car and of course this part here is part of the cable mechanism to connect the gear shift assembly. So at the final stage now we've got the engine back up in the car with the 2.5 litre stroker. This is the K-frame on the bottom of the Evo 10. I get my cameraman you can see this is the part that bolts up to the chassis, takes the torque reaction of the engine twisting back and forwards. The whole engine sits here but what I wanted to show you was the sway bar. The sway bar links and the roll center kit. So you can see down here the three adjustments on the end of the white line sway bar which allows to change the stiffness of the sway bar because obviously this is a softer setting, middle and hardest. This is the adjustable replacement heavy duty sway bar link that connects obviously to the suspension and then what we've got here you can see the different colored lower ball joints and up the back here the ball joint for the end of the steering rack because obviously this is what turns the steering wheel but what I wanted to show you on these on these uh, rod ends for the lower ball joint and the tie rod end is the roll center kit is what changes the geometry mechanically in the front of the car to make it handle better and that's what we can design into your Evo 10 to make the car just that little bit better from a handling point of view. And it's not very often you get to see this type of parts dismantled from underneath the car. Normally it's all bolted up underneath. The other thing I wanted to show you is also just the way the rack mounts to the K-frame. Different model cars have different mounts. On the Evo 10 you can see it's positively mounted onto the bottom of the steel fabricated frame. This part here is obviously you protect all the heat from this is where the turbo sits and obviously there's a lot of radiant heat. So there you have it, just some of the ways that you can mechanically improve the handling of your car. Sway bar is definitely a valuable way to improve it from a body roll point of view but you can see here why it's such a big job to fit it on an Evo 10. Okay so obviously as you can hear in the background the engine's now running. We've started up the engine, we've done all the precautionary pre-checks, oil pressure, led the coolant as best we can before the engine was started, cranked it over without the ignition connected so it won't fire, get oil pressure and obviously the engine started first time which is obviously something that we're always grateful for in such a major engine rebuild. You can see in the background here the special container that we're using which is attached to the radiator cap to bleed up the cooling system. A lot of people don't understand how to bleed a cooling system in a modern day car correctly and this and most importantly on a Subaru it's vital to get all the airlocks out of the engine with the reliance of these modern day engines on keeping weight down to a minimum and maximum efficiency with the aluminium radiators because obviously the manufacturers don't want too much water in the system because that's extra weight to carry from a fuel economy point of view but at the same time you need the water to get rid of the heat. Um, I'll get my cameraman to come around the side because I'm pretty happy about my new wheels. Um, the Oz Racing wheels and of course in the background is the new DBA T3 slotted 5000 series rotor. Now the fantastic thing about those rotors is that they're multi-directional and they've got better stopping power than the previous 5000 series rotors. They've got aluminium hats to reduce the temperature in the wheel hub and the maximum durability. So of course from here it's a, a what we call a basic running tune with reprogramming the Ecutec ECU because I've got my head tuner being standing over the shoulder watching at the moment because we want to get the car out on a road test tonight and I'm pretty anxious to drive it as well. And um, we'll then update you next with the dyno information and finally dyno data.